Hi Anna, thanks for your work and for offering ordinary people like me a platform. My name's Nigel and I'm originally from Rochdale and I teach economics and I've got the following points to make. Initially back in March I was extremely concerned about Covid-19. From early on in January I'd watched clips uh, via social media that purported to show the Chinese police bricking up entrances to tower blocks in Wuhan. There are also clips of people being dragged out of their homes by uh, what looked like police. Eventually, the decision was made on the 18th of March to lock the UK down. As part of that announcement, the British government also told teachers and students and parents that GCSE and A-level exams wouldn't be taking place this year and that centre assessed grades would be awarded instead. At the time, this struck me as being a very odd decision. Why cancel the exams so early? Back in March, we still didn't know much about the virus and its lethality. As I say, it seemed to be a very strange thing to do. As, in, as an economist, I believe that people respond to incentives. By cancelling the public exams, the government removed any incentive for GCSE and A-level students to keep on studying. They were cut adrift without any purpose. By July, the pubs were open. Exam halls are far more socially distanced than pubs. In retrospect, the government's decision to cancel public exams in March was premature and unnecessarily cruel. The furlough schemes also shocked me. The state paying 80% of people's wages was an unprecedented decision. It ensured that ordinary working people complied with the government's decision to shut down business activity. Without furlough, people would have disobeyed the government. They would have got up and gone to work to earn a crust and businesses would have stayed open. As a result of that, there wouldn't be this uh, economic calamity that's facing us. So as a, as a tool to destroy the economy, uh, furlough was highly effective. Um, that might be a bit of a counterintuitive point, but I, I firmly believe that. I'm also ex um, extremely concerned about the state of the economy. The output of um, Britain's fallen by around about a fifth. Uh, US GDP's fell, fallen by a third. Again, this is unprecedented. What will happen when the furlough schemes ends? I think that there's gonna be a huge surge in unemployment. Uh, consumer spending will also drop. More businesses will experience falling sales and they'll respond by cutting production and employment, causing further drops in demand and sales. Rinse, lather and repeat. Two or three weeks into the lockdown, it became obvious that the COVID-19 was not the dramatic threat to life that I initially thought it was. The lockdown should have been lifted by mid-April at the latest, but it wasn't. I'm a follower of the Austrian economist Ludwig von Mises. According to Mises, human action is purposeful behaviour. So why has the government persisted with the lockdown? At the moment, I'm sad, I'm sad to say that I'm far more concerned about the actions of our government than I am about the lethality of COVID-19. We now know that less than 1% of all those infected of COVID-19 die from it. Why is the government persisting with its lockdown? Surely the likes of Boris Johnson and Cummings can see that the cost of the lockdown to society outweighs the benefits. What is the government trying to achieve? Can we be sure about what their objectives are? There's been far too many errors and far too much authoritarianism for my liking. People's actions are orientated towards their op objectives. Uh, that includes politicians and bureaucrats. As I say, human action, or should I say, as Mises says, human action is purposeful behaviour. So if you study somebody's actions, you can normally deduce something about what their objectives are. Um, I also think that we need to start being honest with ourselves regarding what's happened over the last six months. It's not been good, but we need to start thinking independently and critically about what's happened. The most important thing we can do now is stop lying to ourselves. As Ayn Rand once said, you can deny reality, but you can't ignore the consequences of ignoring reality.